So we are the final section of your plane geometry. Okay, all circles. So that will require us to recall okay, all our circle properties, which I have already summarized for you in page 4 and 5 of your notes. Okay. One new thing that I will introduce later on is this alternate segment theorem. Okay, so alternate segment theorem, even if you see in Amex, okay, as in you want to use this property in Amex, uh, in Emacs, sorry. Okay, if you want to use this property in Emacs, you can do so. Although usually uh, you don't require using alternate segment theorem. Okay? But in Amex, whenever you are given any circles to actually go about proving, okay, we will usually require alternate segment theorem. Okay, but we will start off by not using it first okay, because the questions don't require it. So I'll come back to it in a moment uh, when I want to introduce questions involving that. Okay. So let's look at example 9. We are given this diagram where O is the center and AB is the diameter of the circle. Given that OX is parallel to BC, we want to prove that OX is perpendicular to AC. Okay, so okay, this indication that I made in black is what we want to actually go about proving. Now, whenever we are given circles, okay, and we want to uh, introduce any 90 degrees into the circle question, because in the original question itself, there's no 90 degrees being mentioned. Okay, there are generally two ways that we can do so okay, to bring in 90 degrees. What is one property that will involve 90 degrees for circles? What we have? Actually, yeah. Okay, right angle and semicircle, right? Okay, so we have this property whereby we need a diameter. Okay and then we get our 90 degrees introduced into the question. Okay, another way that we can do so is tangent perpendicular to radius. Right? Okay, so tangent perpendicular to radius, so if you have a circle, sorry, my circles are not that perfect. Okay, but if I have a radius and a tangent, okay, that's how a 90 degrees can be introduced to it. Okay, and 90 degrees is very often being used in your um, circle question. Right, so there's some things over there. Okay, so now in this case, there's no tangent involved, so very likely we will not be using this. Okay, we will be making use of right angle and semicircle. Why? Because the question has already mentioned that AB is a diameter. Okay, so with AB being diameter, we know that this is going to be 90 degrees. Right? Okay, and because the question has already told us that OX is parallel to BC okay, by your corresponding angles parallel lines property we will see that this 90 degrees can be transferred over here and therefore that's how we get our 90 degrees so the proof is actually not that long okay, so let's write that down Okay. 
means that AB is a diameter with center O, and then DC is parallel to AB, and DB and OC intersect at E. We want to prove that angle BEC, which is this angle over right here, is actually three times the angle of ABD. So ABD is this angle over right here. So to keep my objective clear, clear, sometimes I will label it in my diagram. I want this to be three times, so I'll just draw three strokes up. Okay? So that I have the diagram to help me okay, to identify uh, the end result that I want. Okay? This is slightly complicated. First of all, do I actually need right angle and semicircle in this case? We don't. So, uh, even though the question did mention AB being a diameter, there is no visible triangle, or rather we can form one, but introducing the 90 degrees isn't helpful because the end result doesn't require us to have any 90 degrees at all. Okay? The end result wants us to have three times of something. We know of a property that can bring in two times of something. Right? Okay, angle at center. It was two times angle at circumference. So we know this property. Okay, so it helps us to multiply a certain angle. So maybe this property won't be helpful. Okay. Furthermore, we are given the center. Okay, so we can identify that angle at the center and angle at the circumference. Okay? Now, mm, other than that, we also know that there are parallel lines. Okay? So with the parallel lines, we can see a z-shape, we can see our alternate angles. So I know that this angle is equal to this one. Okay? So, uh, at least we know that. Okay, we write down the things that we know first. Right? Another thing that we know is the angle BOC, which is an angle at the center. Okay, maybe I should use a different color. Angle BOC is an angle at the center itself. Okay, and it is subtended by this chord over here. Okay, so it forms this triangle here. And with this same chord, right, it brings us another angle, okay, that is at the circumference. Do you all see that? Okay, so the angle at the center over here is actually two times this angle. Okay, so maybe just to indicate the two times vector idea, okay, I just indicate with the strokes up. Alright? So this is the objective that we want, alright? So, how then, okay, do we see that this angle is going to be three times of this? Okay, a helpful property for us to remember about triangle is the exterior angle of triangle property. Okay, it is in your notes. It does help us to save a little bit of time by remembering this property, which tells us that, that the angle that is outside of the triangle is equal to this angle plus this angle. Right? So, what do we see over here is that with this triangle, okay, if I were to extend it out like that, do we see that this triple angle that we want, okay, is actually the exterior angle of this one plus this one. So, if this is double and this is single, this adds up to be three. You all see that? Okay. I know that at the beginner level, it is not going to be easy to pass to see this, okay? But that's why I'm telling you that, okay, when we want triple angle, maybe we think about certain properties that will help us to increase it in size, okay? And then also making use of any other fact that we already know. In this case, the alternate angles idea. So now let's write down the formal proof, okay? ABD equals to X. That will give us a lot much more, a lot of convenience in terms of our presentation. Because otherwise, you're going to tell me ABD equals BDC, and then after equals that, that, and 
very difficult for us to link eventually. Okay? So angle ABD is the base, we let it be X. We know that angle CDB is equal to X also due to your alternate angles, parallel lines. That was the first thing that we observed. Okay. And then we talk about how this is actually double of this. So angle BOC equals to 2x.
that using sites is not going to be a feasible proof okay, for this uh, question at all. Okay, because there's no given information about the length at all. You cannot use the information in part two to help you in part I. Uh. It must go in sequence. Okay? So therefore, we must be relying on AA similarity tests. We have one pair of corresponding angle already. Now the task is to find out okay, the other pair of similar uh, angles, or rather, uh, same angles. Okay. So we know that one pair will add either be M and K. So M is over here and K is over here. And the other pair would be N and L. Okay, so which pair would be easy for us to actually go about proving? Okay, and how do we actually show that they are going to be equal? Right? So, um, hang on, so it's actually I also need to think one, uh, even though I wrote it out. of our NKJ as well as our N, sorry, NKJ and LMG. Okay. So we focus on that. How we do that is that NKJ is equal to 180 degrees minus the way angle and ML. Okay. Why? That's because of your angles opposite sectors. Okay, so if you recall how to identify your cyclic quadrilateral, if I'm able to have a quadrilateral whereby all the four corners are on the circumference of the circle, okay, the opposite sides or rather the opposite angles okay, will have to add up to be 180 degrees. So we know that this angle and this angle add up to be 180 degrees. Hence, I wrote NK, uh, NKJ is equal to 180 minus away this angle here. Okay, and that property is your angles in opposite segments. Okay, so let me just write this down. If this is X, this is 180 minus X. Okay, I'm trying to prove that this is equal to this. Okay, and I hope that you see that if this is 180 minus x and this is on the same straight line, then this will have to be x because of your adjacent angles on the straight line.
in case you're wondering, could you do it with the other angle? We need to say the angle at L and the angle at N. Okay, you can do that. So the angle at L is this, angle at N is this one. Okay, so the same thing actually applies. Using your angles in opposite segment. So in this diagram, 
you are given that PA, PTA, and KC are tangents to the circle at A, B, and C respectively. So since we are given tangents, we will use properties related to tangents. Okay? One important property is your tangent perpendicular to radius. But in this question, no radius is being given to us, so we will not be able to use that. Another important one is tangents from external point. So if you look at your notes, there is one that says tangents from external point. Okay? And what tangents from external point tells us is that the two tangents that comes from anywhere on the circle, when they meet, okay, it will be such that PA and PB are going to be equal in length. Okay? Likewise, for the tangent PK and KC, when they meet, your BK is equal to KC. Okay, and that is helpful because in part I, we want to show that triangle PAB and KBC are isosceles. Right, so we will be making use of that property. Okay, so let's answer part I first. Okay, I really don't have much information, 
right? Then I'll just write down what I know first. Okay, so sometimes that will help. Okay, just write down what you know first. Okay? But of course, I know the answer, lah, right? So why I choose intentionally PAB and KBC, okay? Uh, that's because, or rather, instead of PAB, maybe just be helpful. PBA and PAB. Okay? PDA is this angle over here. Maybe I should choose a uh, green color. And then our KBC is this angle over here. Okay, we see that this angle plus this angle plus this angle will definitely form on a straight line and they will add up to be 180 degrees. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation of some sort. Okay, in order to show that this is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, and also making use of this information that we are given. Okay, so how that will look like? First, write down. The thing that we know that they are on a straight line. And then we can make the subject of ABC, which is 180 minus the weight angle PBA minus away angle KBC. I already have an expression of PBA and I also have an expression for KBC. Okay, so I can write that in.
see. I know I've been having it very easy. That it comes very natural to me. I want to tell you it doesn't come naturally to me either. It does take me some time to look and figure out how to run it out in the as well. Okay? So it is not easy okay, to actually uh, pan it out as well. Okay, so it will take some time of figuring out the diagram, making markings here and there, okay, and then having all the pieces of information and then putting all together. Okay. Circle itself. 
Okay, so each triangle, all the corners must be on the circle. And then the tangent must be out of one of the corners, okay, of the triangle. Okay, and then how is it alternate? Okay, it is based on this angle over here that is alternating from here, okay, that are going to be equal. Right? So we can have this angle equal to this angle. That is what alternate segment theorem says. Must have tangent, must have triangle, all the corners on the circle. Okay? So naturally with this understanding, there is also another pair that we can observe out of this diagram that I didn't write in, which is this angle over here will also be equal to the angle on the outside of the triangle and to the tangent, this angle. So this angle and this angle are actually also equal to each other based on your alternate segment theorem. Okay, so angle PBA equals angle, if I have this as S, PAS. Right? So that is what your alternate segment theorem says. Okay? Right? Of course the tangent need not always be a horizontal line. So just to provide us with different orientations uh. Okay, so don't be fixated on seeing things in one manner only Okay, so even if my circle being this way Having a triangle like this Okay, the center placement doesn't matter actually So long as you have a triangle and let's say I have a tangent here. Okay? So what are the two alternate angles that we can have? We can have one being here, another one here. Right? Okay? And then the next one being this one with this one. So angle on the inside, angle on the outside. Right? So there's another way that you can see things. That's the alternate segment theorem. Okay, clear? Let's do a question now. Okay, in this diagram, there are points A, B, C, D that lie on the circle. The lines Q, A, T, and P, B, T are tangents and A, B respectively. Q, D, C is a straight line and is parallel to A, B. Okay? It is uh, very important for us to not be confused with recognizing C, D, Q as a tangent. Very often, people tend to misinterpret or get confused that you know, C, D, Q becomes a tangent itself. Just because it is a line that goes outside of the circle, it doesn't mean that it is a tangent. Huh? Tangent must be at one point of the circle only. Okay? So, um, QDC being a straight line, it is also parallel to AB. In part I, we want to show that triangle ABC is similar to ADQ. So, ABC being this, ADQ being this one. Okay? So, maybe it will be helpful for us to again draw out the two triangles in the same orientation. So A, B, C, A, D, e, Q. Okay. Just for a final diagram on this stuff. Right? So how are we to determine that they are going to be similar? Because there is actually no common angle. Okay? So, first of all, we recognize that there are tangents. So when there are tangents and there are triangles, we observe that there are two triangles inside the circle, one being ABC, the other one being ADC. Okay, we can recognize our alternate segment theorem first. Okay, or apply our alternate segment theorem. Okay, since our focus is on triangle ABC, and our focus is also on AQD, so we focus on this tangent over here. Okay. We can see that one pair of alternate segment is this part. Okay, another one is 
this angle right here. Okay. So one of the angles that are being identified is this angle B. Okay, we want to figure out a way to show that it is equal to this angle Q over here. Okay, sorry, angle D, not angle Q. My bad. Okay, yep, they get to go. Okay. So how? How could we show that this angle is equal to this angle here? Okay. So let's maybe just write down what we already know first. Sorry that just now I confused you with this ring. 
alternate segment theorem effect. Okay, but that is usually how I would go about figuring out the answer as well. I try to figure out what are all the equal monsters. Okay. And then I will realize that this and this are actually not that helpful. Okay, so I need to think of another way. Alright. Now notice that this A, B, C, D is after all a cyclic quadrilateral also. Okay. We have altered our we have angles in opposite segment. This and this angle, they add up to be 180 degrees. So let me just erase this one. Okay. And then this angle is actually on the same straight line as this angle over here. Because adjacent angles on a straight line. So there is a way for us to connect this to this and then to this. Because there's this connecting angle over here. Okay. So let's write that out. We said that angle ABC plus angle ADC equals 180 degrees. Okay, two times of this 
is actually equals to 180 degrees minus a weight angle VTA, which is outside of here. Okay, so how are we supposed to go about doing that? Okay, first we make use of our similar triangle that we have proven earlier on.
example 14. Uh, matter of uh, cross multiplying. 